Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to do a review on the Genmitsu Jinsoku LC40. It's a solid and very easy to use laser engraver and cutter made by the folks over at SaneSmart. So how do I like it? What are my pros and cons? Well, let's find out. The Jinsoku LC40, Jinsoku translating to rapid or fast by the way, came very well packaged with what you need to get started. It was one of the easier to assemble lasers that I have put together, if not the easiest, and has a very sturdy frame and quality feel. It sports a nice aluminum frame and gantry that runs on linear rails. They did a great job of hiding components in the frame for a nice clean professional look. The cable system is also the nicest cable management I have on any of my laser engravers. You can tell a lot of thought went into how it was designed, and finally now I have a cable that I never have to worry about getting in the way or accidentally getting engraved over. The Jinsoku LC40 is also advertised with a work area of 400 by 400 millimeters, which is kind of true, which I'll explain. The machine is also equipped with hidden limit switches. The way these switches work is there is this little screw head thing that rides under the X and Y axis and sticks out. This is what hits the limit switches, which are these little red buttons, to home the machine. The issue that I can see is that the screw sits out so far that it prevents the X axis from reaching its full zero position, so the gantry never fully reaches right up to the frame, which is probably intentional to keep the laser from banging into the frame. Unfortunately, that also means you can't achieve the full 400 by 400 millimeters unless you adjust that. On my machine, I was able to get 400 in the Y, but only 390 in the X, which is fine for me since I don't ever really need to go right up to that border, but it's something to keep an eye on if that's important to you. The laser on the Jinsoku LC40 is a fixed focus 5.5 watt output laser with a 0.1 by 0.2 millimeter laser spot on the model that I have. This definitely is not the most powerful laser I own or the smallest laser spot, but it still gets the job done. It is my understanding that SaneSmart will be coming out with a more powerful laser with a more compressed spot but that is not available now at the time of the filming of this review. The laser comes mounted with a Z-height adjustment knob that is very convenient. It can fit objects from 0.1 millimeters all the way up to 76 millimeters, which is about three inches. You just slide the five millimeter aluminum spacer from the frame and place it between the laser body and the workpiece. When you have the height correct, you just tighten the knob, put the spacer back in the frame, and your laser is focused. The laser is also equipped with this little orange laser shield at the bottom to protect your eyes from looking at the laser spot. This actually brings me to a surprising con I have about this product. This is the first laser that I have that did not come with safety glasses. While they can be purchased as separate add-on item, they are not included with the kit. Now the shield in the front really does a great job of hiding the laser spot, but it's still possible to get in a place where you may see the spot and you never want to do that without eye protection on. The laser module is also designed with a smoke management system which is a pretty clever design that I haven't seen before. The fan on the top of the module not only cools the laser down, it also blows air to the bottom of the laser where it hits this metal fin that blows the air back away, clearing the smoke out the back of the machine. While this is not an air assist by any means, it does keep smoke and debris from building up under the laser and affecting its power. Also at the time of the filming of this video, there is no air assist for this machine. I know that they are currently working on one which might even be available now depending on when you're watching this video. On the back of the machine is where you hook everything up. You have a power button that obviously turns the machine on. Next to that is a repeat last job button which I assume works with their firmware which I will talk about in a minute. Then there is a USB port which I'm assuming is for a peripheral like a rotary attachment but again it is not available at the time of this filming. There is a standard USB-B port for data, and then a power port. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the firmware. The Jinsoku LC40 is an open source machine which is really nice to see. 
This means that you can use many different types of software to control the machine and not just the proprietary software package from the company. The machine comes with a somewhat proprietary version of the firmware loaded onto the machine right out of the box. It uses something called Laser Engraver that has both computer software as well as a mobile app that can control the machine via Bluetooth. While this is a cool feature to see, I would prefer to use Gerbil firmware on the machine so you can't use both at the same time. I wanted to use Lightburn so I followed the steps on the website to upgrade the firmware to Gerbil and it worked pretty fine with the machine. Like I was mentioning, the machine comes with limit switches which means you can home the laser and use absolute coordinates when using the machine. Now this only really works well if you can somehow position the machine in, in the same spot every time and use some sort of grid to take advantage of these coordinates. First I designed a 3D print of some registration feet that could be screwed down to a spoil board that I wanted to burn my grid pattern onto. This will keep the laser from moving and honestly I'm not sure why laser manufacturers have not integrated this type of thing into all of their designs, especially if it comes with limit switches. I then designed a grid pattern in Lightburn and burned it onto the spoil board. You might notice that the grid only goes to 390 millimeters in the X since that is the extent of my movable area. So the first thing I did after the grid was a little wood test to check the power of the laser which seems pretty comparable to the other 5.5 watt lasers that I have. I also did a small test with this Mount Rushmore image which turned out okay but I would probably tweak both the image and settings to get a better result. The next thing I wanted to try was the Norton White Tile method which turned out pretty nice. If you are not familiar with the Norton white tile method, it is essentially you spray paint a white tile with either white or off-white paint and then burn onto the paint. Then you use acetone to remove the paint from the tile and what you are left with is an indelible mark on the surface. It is one of my favorite things to do with a laser engraver. Again, this laser has a spot a little larger than some of the other machines I have, so the resolution is not quite as high but still gives a great result. I then wanted to test cutting and it made very quick work of this 2 millimeter thick wood. I then engraved and cut a pretty large sign on this 3 millimeter basswood and it did a great job. I was able to cut into it in one pass at 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power and it turned out very nice. I would have gotten less charring with an air assist, but again, it's not an option at the time of this review, but maybe when you watch it. So I wanted to try some different materials. First I wanted to try glass. I have no rotary, but I still wanted to try it, so I took this glass container from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to etch my logo on it. First using a cheap Harbor Freight airbrush, I painted the outside of the glass with tempura paint. The next issue I ran into was even though the module can raise up 3 inches, it still wasn't enough clearance for the container. I then designed and 3D printed these spacers that lift the machine up another 2.5 inches and fit onto the other feet I showed you earlier. If you check in the video description you can find a link to all of these 3D prints and the grid. I have also designed light burn files that would allow you to make the feet and risers from wood if you don't have a 3D printer. So I ran the laser on the object and then I washed off the tempura paint by just rinsing it under the faucet. It turned out really nice. I think it even turned out nicer than the other side that I did on my more powerful lasers. It has a nice consistent texture across it and it worked very well. I then rated our cabinets for this squared off glass and ran a pattern on it as well and it did an amazing job. Lastly, I wanted to try some even harder materials, so I burned my logo onto this anodized aluminum wallet. It did a really good job and I was very happy with how even the small details came out. Now I wanted to try it on an even harder metal. I have these stainless steel components for my Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine, so I wanted to see if the laser was powerful enough to mark that surface. The laser comes with a dry erase marker, so I used it to cover the surface and then burn on my design. After it's done, you just wipe away the marker and you're left with the etched surface. 
I was very happy with how it turned out and you can see very nice small details on the steel. So now for the pros and cons. First the pros. The machine is very solid and was extremely easy to build. It comes with a nice color manual with easy to read instructions. I also love the cable management and feel it's the best I have on any of the lasers that I own. I like the easy fix focus module with the front facing Z axis height adjustment. I also like the design of the smoke removal from the fan that blows the smoke back away from the laser and from me. I also love that this laser is open source and gives you a choice when it comes to the firmware so you can make choices on how you use it. And finally I'm happy to see the limit switches that allow for the laser to use the absolute coordinates and makes it easier to line up pieces that you want to work on. Now for the cons. As I have said before, I can't believe any laser would ship without safety glasses. It's just the most basic safety equipment to have when using any laser. Again, the shield does a good job of making the laser not visible, but I would rather be safe than sorry. Looking a little forward to the rotary attachment that will come on this machine, it seems like it will plug into the USB port in the back of the machine. The only real con to that might be that if you already have a rotary from another machine or brand, I'm not sure that it would be compatible with this machine since all of the attachments I have only hook up with a stepper motor connection and not a USB, but that still remains to be seen. And lastly, there is no current air assist or stronger laser module. Again, just at the time of the filming there is no current air assist, but I've been assured that one is coming. I also know that they are going to release a stronger laser module for this machine eventually, so these are really cons for now, but might be fixed in the future. Overall, I have been very happy with this machine. I really do like to see how more time and effort is going into the design and build of these machines with higher quality build construction and with the idea of making everything easier to assemble and use. I want to thank Sansmart for sending this machine to me for an honest review and for answering any questions I had along the way. Thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, CNC machines, injection molding machines, and all things maker. Thanks again, be safe, and we'll see you next time.